Building the dream video studio? I got an email this morning from a distant cousin in Nigeria that said he had $10 million to gift me and that he was so excited to find his long lost relative. So I decided to start brainstorming my dream studio. Psst, just so you know, it was a scam. Glad we cleared that up. Today, I'm sharing the top five must haves for the ultimate video creation space. Let's dive in. You've seen in my past videos that I had a studio and I took a wild leap of opening up my own space in the middle of a global pandemic. But this wasn't the first office space I've had. In fact, I had worked in a shared office space for years before that, and even back when I originally started my business, I worked in a co-working space. So I've seen a wide array of working spaces from shared to solo. I also spent some time when I was on the road to a conference in Dallas to stop in at local video studios and take a tour. I saw studios that were built into co-working spaces, I saw studios that were built just for the company, and even multi-studio venues. It's really neat to see how every company makes it their own, and that's why I've nailed down the five things that I'd want in a studio, regardless of whether or not I go back to having a space of my own. But whether you're in a studio or working from home, I think we can both agree that having a tool in your back pocket to record videos from anywhere is always a good call. That's where Riverside, today's sponsor comes in. Riverside helps me take my studio mobile and allows me to record interviews with remote guests all from my laptop. More on that in just a little bit. The first thing I'd want in a video studio moving forward is the ability to create multiple recording spaces. The same space that you'd use for a two-person video podcast such as two seats and a coffee table is not going to serve the same purpose as a psych wall with a green screen. The same goes for having seamless paper roll backdrops for headshot photos, but needing a larger presentation area if you're recording live streams or live presentations in the studio. One of my biggest struggles with filming multi-camera setups in my old studio was that I only had one studio room. So I really made an effort to make the most out of all four walls. So each wall was different. One had a brick backdrop, one had colored paper rolls, one had pipe and drape, and the other had a wood plank wall with LED lights. This is great for being versatile, but horrible if you need a different angle during a two camera interview, because you might see the edge of another backdrop poke through in the corner. By having more spaces and styles of recording spaces, you can not only better serve your clients, but it allows you to do more than one project at a time. So if your studio is big enough, this gives you room to double book and or eventually grow into the bigger space. That's also another obstacle I had, which was I quickly grew into the space to the point where I felt overwhelmed with how many things I had to store and move around. By keeping preset spaces in the studio, you can simply walk in, turn the lights on, and go. Now, before I dive into today's content, I want to introduce you to a tool that is completely transformed the way that I record videos online. Riverside.fm. It's like having a professional online video studio at your fingertips. This is Riverside, and when you first log into Riverside, you get to a dashboard where you can see all of your studios. You can create new studios anytime that you wish, and you can label them as you'd like. This was an interview with David. Now, when I've recorded this, I have a side-by-side -side video, but the beauty of this is I can go further down here and I can see that I have individual video files for each person that was in the recording. Now, the cool part about these recorded files is you can download the high quality version where you get the option for the raw video or the raw audio. Of course, the video comes with the audio, but then you can also download a backup. Now, the really, really cool part about this is I can go into the magic editor and I can edit this video myself right here and I can even see it using that transcript off to the side here. So now, let me show you how I would go about making a new studio. All I have to do is click on the new studio button and I'll name it my studio. And then lastly, we will either enter the studio or continue with just the setup and you can enter it later. I'm just going to type in, this is my teleprompter. This is a fun tool they just added. And then I'm going to hit the teleprompter button here and boom, we now have a teleprompter right on the spot. So if I had a script I needed to read or if I wanted to share it with that person later down the road, they can go ahead and actually see that teleprompter on their side as well. So if I go back to 
the Riverside dashboard and I go to this one right here. Now Magic Clips actually transcribes your video and so I can go in right here and I can tweak it. So if I need to adjust where it was edited, I can always go back in and get that clip again. I can make a new clip and you can see our recorded files from right here. So all in all, a very, very cool platform. I love using it. I've done a few recordings with some clients for this. This allows me to record people remotely and I highly recommend if you're interested in checking this out, go ahead and click that link down in the description below because we have a special offer for you to get access to Riverside today. Now, back to the video. The next thing I know that I would need in a studio is soundproofing. My office had a drop ceiling with very little insulation between the ceiling and the roof of the building. So during a heavy rainstorm, you could hear everything. There were times the sound was deafening and I lucked out that in three years of being there, it only rained that heavily during the days that I was editing. I took heavy moving blankets that I bought from Harbor Freight and some tension cargo rods to hold them in place over the big glass windows. And this dampened sound in the room a ton. It also helped to add some soundproofing. I also lucked out that the owner of the building used my space as his band's practice room. So before I even moved in, one wall had cubicle soundproofing screwed into the wall to make sure that their drummer didn't blow out the accounting firm next door. I was lucky there, but many studios have to invest heavily in insulation to make sure that no outside sounds come through the walls. Having a quiet workspace provides better audio quality and the stress of soundproofing or needing to go yell at the neighbors to turn the music down is simply not worth it. Invest in soundproofing would be my number two priority moving forward. Next up is storage, and you really can't have enough storage. I've mentioned before that when you take the leap into getting a studio, it's kind of like water filling a bowl. It doesn't matter the shape or the size of the bowl. If you have enough water, it will fill every part of it. That's exactly what happened to me. I started amassing equipment and I simply justified it one, because because I needed it for work, but two, because I knew that I had somewhere to put it all. So as you can imagine, when I decided to downsize, I had to get rid of a lot of things. In the office I used to have, there was one relatively deep storage closet, but I soon filled that entire space and things started to seep out into the rest of the studio. Before I knew it, I had two more eight foot tall by four foot wide storage racks, all completely filled with equipment. Then towards the end, I was just using the studio space to store things because there was no more room. So if I got a new studio, I'd want at least double the storage space that I thought I needed. It would be even better if the storage space was accessed at the ground level or through a garage bay door so it's easier to transport things in and out of the building. Back when I was sharing an office space, we always had to drive our cars around the back of the building and lift all of the cases up and over a five foot tall cinder block wall. That's no fun for load in and load out every single time. It makes way more sense to just have a space where you can wheel things out the door and place them in the truck. Fourth on my list of dream video studio wants is a dedicated meeting space. This means a room with a conference table, perhaps a mini fridge that always stays stocked with drinks and of course snacks. Being able to bring clients into your space, give them a tour and treat them to the Royal White Glove experience is going to bring the value. We all know that value is crucial when it comes to selling a client on a project at top dollar. If you can't show them the value, it's going to be that much harder to get them to say yes or sign a contract. This is a small way that you can wine and dine them, so to speak, so that clients understand when they come to your studio, they're not just getting four walls and a guy with a camera, but they're getting an experience, which is exactly what they're willing to pay for. It adds to the perception that they're getting the best service and a top-notch product, all without costing much more. The expense of keeping a mini fridge and some snacks in stock also can be worked into a studio rental fee when clients use your space. By keeping meetings out of the way of filming, they won't be walking into a messy area where you're constantly cramming cables and pelican cases into every little nook and cranny. My previous studio was certainly lacking this and while many people still walked in and said wow, it would have been nice to have a dedicated spot instead of needing to rearrange the studio every single time. Last but not least is a space for you. A dedicated relaxation space, whether it be a comfy sofa, a hammock, or just a really good lounge chair. In my co-working space, one of the companies bought a $3,000 massage chair, and you bet I took client calls 
from that chair whenever I could. Having somewhere to crash or take a nap on those longer days sure beats my strategy of rolling up some moving blankets and sandbags to crash on the floor for half an hour with the lights out. I'm not saying to buy a nap pod, but a good chair that you can relax in to take some calls goes a long way. And here's a bonus tip. Consider incorporating adjustable lighting to set different moods in your studio. The Aperture lights have a Bluetooth enabled app where you can quickly set various fixtures and presets room by room. This not only enhances the aesthetics of your videos, but also creates a more dynamic and visually engaging atmosphere. If the lights are mounted off the floor, you can save a ton of floor space. Check out the tour I did of my buddy Marty's studio, linked below, if you want to see how they built a lighting grid to install in their drop ceiling. It supports all of their lighting and keeps the floors clean. Now that we've explored the essentials for the perfect video studio, what are your must-haves? Share your thoughts in the comments below, and if you're aspiring to build your dream studio, don't forget to subscribe for more tips and insights. Until next time.